So Battlefield 3 is uh, the successor to the game Battlefield 2 that was released in 2006. Uh, so it's been a long time uh, and finally we have been able to get the game to where we want it to be. Uh, here today we're showing uh, more or less the entire game, at least snippets of the entire game. So there are single player, um, a couple of uh, missions, and there's been a co-op mission, and we're showing a lot of multiplayer, which is the backbone of Battlefield. Yeah, so the single player experience is, is uh, you know, tailored to show you know, everything you can do in, in Battlefield, or at least give a, a glimpse of uh, the variety you have in a Battlefield game. So you will have everything from vehicle missions, you will have a lot of gadgets, you have a lot of guns, of course and also be able to show a lot of different environments. We see Battlefield uh, single player as a stepping stone into the core that is the multiplayer of Battlefield. So you can see it as icing on a cake, even if it's quite a big icing. Uh, it, it is uh, uh, an important part of the experience, but if you look at how many hours you would spend on it, you can't even imagine to compare it with how many hours you would spend in multiplayer. So the biggest difference between Battle 2 and Battle 3 is, of course, well, time has passed. So you know, gaming has evolved, we have evolved, the technology has evolved. So there's a lot of you know obvious changes that we have. We have always uh, you know been trying to create this authentic battlefield with all our battlefield games uh, previously, and, and this time around we have the technology to make it even more authentic. So there's no difference in, in our goal when it comes to the core of the game. Uh, then of course we're adding components like single player, we're adding components like co-op and now uh, battle log which is also the, the social wrapper around the whole product. Uh, so there's a lot of bits and pieces that you could argue is the same uh, when it comes to the core of the battle experience but uh, you, you can see this as a bigger and, and more modern product uh, when it comes to you know, how we see Battlefield in the future. We have a new unlock system that is much, much deeper than we've ever had before. So you can actually unlock uh, different uh, scopes that actually fits to uh, many different weapons. So you have a rail system on the weapons uh, where you can attach different gadgets. Uh, and this means that uh, you know, every weapon in the game has its own progression. Every kit has its own progression, and then uh, the soldier in itself has its own progression. So there are many different layers that are catering to different personalities instead of just having one system, and if you don't like that, you're out. Uh, we try to cater to the Battlefield player, and the Battlefield player is actually a quite a wide array of personalities. So vehicles has, has been uh, getting an overhaul on, on uh, you know, adding more stuff to that experience. So not only can you, you know, uh, we have a sprint button for vehicles where you can you know, have afterburners for the jets, you can uh, do a burst uh, for acceleration for the tanks, uh, you have smoke, you have different accessories that can unlock for the vehicles. You can, you can uh, decide yourself what type of weapons you equip the jet with. Uh, and all of this is to cater for a more in-depth experience. Uh, we also have uh, vehicle disabling, which is a completely new feature. Uh, instead of the tank just going from a you know, uh, health state where it's completely you know, like normal and then explode, uh, we actually go to a health state that is disabled mode, uh, which makes the vehicle you know, disabled. So you can still use the turret, you can still use the tank, but you can't move it in the same manner uh, that you could before. Uh, and this adds a new layer of strategy to, to the vehicles because you can either choose to bail out or you can defend yourself and try to get out of the situation. The problem is if you bail out you have a vehicle that you can easily repair it and then steal from the enemy. So the strategy is then uh, how do you, how do you, uh, you know, use this situation to your advantage rather than just you know, uh, bail out and run. I think there are some, some you know, obvious pillars that Battlefield has that we haven't really seen in, in other first-person shooters. Uh, first of all, we have the vehicles. That's an that extra layer that we haven't really seen in other games. And when I mean vehicles, it's the controllable vehicles. You have the jets, you have the tanks, you have the jeeps, you have the helicopters. All of them can be controlled by the player. You even have boats in the game. Uh, another layer is, of course, the, the team play. There's a lot of team play aspects uh, how you squad up, how you 
get points for supportive actions. You know, you could you could probably end up number one in the scoreboard, but without firing a single bullet. And that's nothing you see in in many first-person shooters. Uh, so there's a lot of you know supportive actions and team play actions that actually uh, gives you points. And then of course we have uh, the destruction, which is the tactical part of the game. It's both the small stuff and and the bigger stuff. Uh, that you can actually dynamically alter the environment around you. And, and those three things you don't really see in other shooters. There's one really cool thing in, in uh, Battlefield 3's uh, single player that we haven't really talked that much about, and that is the, uh, the cutscenes that we have. It's the, the whole, uh, you know, the thing that strings the story together, uh, which is we're using a technology that you haven't really seen before in any other game. It's called Face Forward, it's a 4D scanning uh, technique where you scan ahead 60 times uh, per second, uh, which means that you have a, a very realistic rendition of, uh, of facial expressions. We, we're using real actors to get you know, uh, the, the, the story to, to come through in, in a very good way. One thing that is very, very important is the longevity that we're putting into the game after we launched it. We have a, we know for for sure that you know, looking historically at Battlefield games, that you know, when you launch them, you don't know exactly what will happen because the, the consumer is so creative, so they will find all crazy things to do in the game, and you always need to take care of a product that big. So we have a, a full team now that is working on the game post-launch as well. Uh, so we don't only try to you know ship it and then forget about it. There's always you know freak things that can happen in, in games like this because you know it's a sandbox. You have systems that, that you throw in there and they they supposed to work in a specific way. But then all of a sudden, it either it turns into an exploit or it turns into a really really cool feature. So it's a it's a you know it's a bug or it's a feature that happens to it quite quite a lot because um, you know for instance you are able to to shoot a jet pilot through the glass or the canopy of the jet. Uh, with a sniper rifle. That was nothing we designed, but since the system works like that, you know, we can shoot bullets through glass and you have a guy behind glass in the canopy. You know, when, we, when you see that the first time, you get quite, you know, <laughs> excited because uh, it's really, really cool and you need to sit down and discuss, should we remove it, is it an exploit or should we just keep it? And of course, you know, in this case, we kept it. So there are, there are always things that can go wrong when you have complicated systems like this, but there's always, cool things that can go very, very right as well. Battlefield 3 is uh, going to be released on the 25th of October on the PC, uh, X360 and PS3. Okay,